They say you can make an advanced capture system for your Discord.js version 14 bot, so let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any of the other videos on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can go ahead and get a god tier subscription on Discord. We also offer the bot tier, which is a full zip file of the exact bot used in the tutorial videos. You can also get three bot packages, which are fully coded Discord bots based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested, and with that, let's go ahead and get the code. All right, so to start, we're going to go over to our handler and we're going to go ahead and create a new folder. This is going to be called functions because what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a global captcha function that can be called anywhere within your bot so that you can use this in multiple different scenarios. So within this functions folder, let's go ahead and create captcha.js. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and get our captcha generator package as well as our discord.js dependencies. So the captcha generator package is just going to be called the captcha canvas. Make sure you do npm i captcha canvas for this to work. For discord.js, we're going to get events, attachment builder, embed builder, action row builder, button builder, button style, interaction collector, model builder, text input builder, and text input style. All of these will be from discord.js. Then we're going to go ahead and write out out async function and we're going to just call this captcha and within this we're going to go and get our text we're going to get to reply and we're also going to get our author so after that we can go ahead and open this up let's go ahead and create a no text error so we're going to throw a new error and we're just going to go ahead and say please provide captcha text use random for a random string and then we're going to go ahead and give it an example so we're going to do captcha and then we can do text and we can do to reply and we're also going to go ahead and pass in our author just like that so then we can go ahead and do if no to reply and we're going to go ahead and throw a new error this is going to be for if the person calling the function does not include a method to reply to um, so we're going to go ahead and say please provide a valid method to reply to captcha text text to reply other interaction or message objects and then i'm also going to add in an author uh, after we do that, we're going to go ahead and write out one more. We're going to do if no author, then we're going to go ahead and throw a new and we can get our error. So in here, we're going to say, please provide a valid user component. So it's going to be captcha uh, text to reply and author just like that. So essentially what we are doing here is we need to have all three of these for this function to work properly. So if the user does not provide them, then we just go ahead and throw an error. Then we're going to go ahead and do var outputs equals false. We can also do var cap text equals an empty string we're going to go ahead and do if text uh, to lowercase so we're going to go ahead and set the input uh, text to lowercase and then we're going to go ahead and check to see if equals random uh, if it does we're going to go ahead and do const alphabet and we can do equals and we're going to go ahead and get the alphabet in both uppercase and lowercase letters so that we can create a random string using both uppercase and lowercase letters then we're going to do var output string equals and we can do an empty string as well and we're going to do four and we can do let i equals zero uh, and then we can go ahead and do if i is less than 10 then we can do i plus plus so after that we can go ahead and open this up we're going to go ahead and do output string uh, plus equals and we can do alphabets so we're going to get that variable and we can go ahead and do math.floor and we're going to go ahead and get math.random and then we're actually going to go ahead and multiply that bar by our alphabet.length variable just like that so what we've done there is we've created a random string uh, now we just have to go ahead and do cap text uh, so we're going to get our te cap text variable equals and we can do output string uh, and then if none of this is true we can just say else and we're going to do cap text equals text so if we don't need a random string we're just going to go ahead and set that usable cap text variable to our text from the captcha so now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and get our captcha so we're going to go ahead and do cons captcha equals new captcha generator let's go ahead and set our dimensions we're going to do 150 by 450 uh, we can go ahead and set our CAPTCHA, we're going to do text, uh, and we can go ahead and get our cap text. We're going to get our size, which is going to be 60, and let's just set color to green as well. Then we're going to go ahead and set decoy, and we can do opacity, and that's going to be set to 0.5. Uh, then we're going to set our trace, and we can just set color to green. And we're also going to go ahead and do generate sync just like that as well so then we're going to go ahead and get our buffer so we're going to do const captcha buffer equals buffer.form and we're going to get our captcha then we're going to get our attachment so we're going to do const attachment we're going to get our new attachment builder we're going to get our captcha buffer and we're going to set the name to captcha.png 
then we're going to go ahead and send in our embed. So we can do const embed equals new embed builder. We're going to set the color to blur pool. We're going to do set image, which is going to be attachment. And then we can get our captcha PNG here. And we're going to set our description. Uh, we're going to get author. You must solve this captcha to proceed. It is case sensitive. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and create a button. So it's going to be const button equals new action row builder. We're going to go ahead and add components. And we're going to go ahead and get a new button builder with a custom ID of CAPTCHA button. We're going to set the label to solve and we're going to do set style to button style that danger. Then we're actually going to go ahead and send our message. So we can do var message equals await to reply dot channel dot send. So we're going to reply to that to reply. We're going to get our embeds and that's going to be our embed. We're going to get our files, which are going to be our attachment variable. We're going to get our components and that is going to be our button. And we're also going to go ahead and set infermal to true on the reply. Then we're going to do const collector equals new interaction collector. We're going to do to reply dot client and we're going to get message. That's going to be message and we can do time uh, and we're going to go ahead and get 10 minutes uh, in milliseconds there as well. Then we can do const model collector equals new interaction collector and we're just going to do to reply dot clients just like that. So we're going to get a collector for our button and we're going to go ahead and get a collector for our model. Then we're going to go in and do collector.on and we're going to go ahead and collect. Let's do async i and we can open this up. So within this collector, we're just going to go ahead and check to see if it's our button. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and say if and we can do i.custom id is equal to captcha button. That's going to be the custom id we used above. Then we can go ahead and open this up. We're going to do if and we can do author is not equal to our i.user. We're going to go ahead and return await i.reply. And we can go ahead and say contents and we're going to go ahead and say only author.username can use this. We're also going to go ahead and say for multi true. Then we're going to go ahead and create a captcha model that we're going to be using to submit the captcha response. So it's going to be a uh, cap model, new model builder. We're going to set the title to submit your captcha answer and we're going to set the custom ID to captcha model. Then we're going to go ahead and get an answer. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get a new text input builder with the custom ID of captcha answer. We're going to set the label to your captcha answer. We're going to set the placeholder to submit. What do you think the captcha is? If you get it wrong, you may try again. And we're going to set the style to short. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to do const row equals new and we can do action row builder and we're going to go ahead and add our components and this is going to be our answer component then we're going to go ahead and do captcha model dot add components and we're going to get our row and then we're going to do wait i dot show model and we're going to get our cap model so now what we're going to go ahead and do is within this collector we're actually going to go ahead and turn on our model collector and we can go ahead and collect and we're going to do async mi for model interaction now that we're in our model collector, we need to check to see if the custom ID is of that model. So we're going to go ahead and say if mi.customID is not equal to our caption model. So that's going to be the custom ID we did right there. Then we're just going to go ahead and return and do nothing. Now within this, we're going to go ahead and say const respond answer equals mi.fields to get text input value and we're going to go ahead and get our captcha answer just like that then we're going to go ahead and say if respond answer so we're going to get our response from the user is not equal to our cap text then we can go ahead and return await mi.reply and we're going to say content and we're just going to say that was wrong try again so if the response that the user is putting into the model is not equal to the text that's in the captcha then we just have to re reply saying it's wrong uh, if it's true, then we're going to go ahead and do await, and we can actually go ahead and reply to that interaction. And we're going to go ahead and say, you have passed a captcha. We're going to set informal to true, and we're actually going to do nothing except do await message that delete and delete the captcha message, and we're going to catch an error as well. So, so far, we've replied to the uh, original captcha message saying you've passed and we've actually deleted the message containing the captcha um, because what's going to actually happen is within the command or the message there's going to be your initial message so we'll have initial and then there's going to be your captcha message and then there's going to be replies so we're going to go ahead and send a reply and delete the captcha so we're going to be left with the initial and the reply and then the last thing we're going to do in here is we're going to return output equals true just like that so outside of the collector now what we can do is we're going to say while and we can do no output we're going to go ahead and do await the new promise and we're going to do resolve we can do set timeouts 
and let's do resolve and we can do 100 so we're basically going to slow down our while loop but we're still going to be checking um, pretty frequently it's just if we slow it down like this it's going to maybe take a little bit of the load off of the actual code so now that it's slowed down and we have an output that's checking to see um, if we have an output what we're going to say is if we do have an output so after this is returned true it's going to allow us to move down to the next line so then we can do await to reply that client dot cache dot set we're going to use the cache that's built into the dev toolkit package uh, so we're going to go ahead and set it to our to reply dot id uh, and we're going to set this to true as well then we're gonna do wait model collector dot stop, and we're also gonna do wait collector dot stop uh, as well, just like that. So the cache right here is a cache that's created within the Dev Toolkit package. As you can see, we've set a client cache to a new map. Um, but what this means setting in our index upon the bot turning on is that we have a cache that we can access anywhere in the code. So this essentially allows us to use a schema without actually having to save any data. So if you don't have this system in your bots, you can just use MongoDB or your schema. Um, but for me, because I have a cache, it makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to be using it. So now that we're actually done with this function, what we can go ahead and do is we can export it. So all we have to do is module.exports and we're going to export our CAPTCHA function. So now we've created a global function that's going to run a captcha and we're going to be able to use this anywhere. So let's go ahead and actually close out so we can close out of our functions and let's go ahead and go over to commands and we can go ahead and create a captcha.js command. All right, so in here, we're just going to get our slash command builder uh, and then we're going to do equals require and we can go ahead and get our discord.js package. And this is how you're going to go ahead and get your captcha. So we're going to do const captcha uh, and then we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our functions and we can go ahead and call our captcha file just like that uh, and then we can go ahead and create our command so we can do module at export let's get our data which is going to be our new slash command builder we can go ahead and set a name which is going to be captcha test let's go ahead and set a description which is going to be captcha testing and we can go ahead and do async executes we can get our interaction and we can go ahead and open this up so the first thing that we're going to actually go ahead and do is we're going to send our initial reply. So we're going to do await interaction our reply and we can go ahead and say content and let's just go ahead and get an emoji and we can go ahead and say captcha testing uh, and let's also go ahead and set informal to true. So then after we do that, we're going to go ahead and call our captcha function. So we're going to do wait captcha uh, and then within this, we're going to go ahead and get our text. We're going to go ahead and pass in our to reply and we're also going to go ahead and pass in our interaction at user as our author. Now our text, we need some text. So we could either do random or we could pass in text that we actually want to use. Um, but let's just go ahead and make it a random string. Now we're going to do var cache equals interaction dot client dot cache dot get and we're going to get our interaction dot id from the cache then we're going to say while and we can do no cache then we're going to go ahead and open this up so every iteration of this what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to set our cache equal to await interaction dot client dot cache dot get um, and then we're going to get that cache. So every single time we run this loop, we want to reassign the variable with the updated data. And then we're going to go ahead and resolve a promise of one second. This is just slowing that loop down so we don't run it so fast that it crashes the bot. So just like before, after this loop is over, then we're going to go in and execute the code that we want to happen once the captcha is solved. So that is going to be await interaction.client.cache.delete. You always want to delete the interaction from the cache, otherwise it will remain there. So we're going to go in and delete that from the cache. And then we're going to go ahead and edit a reply saying approved from the captcha. So this is going to be a basic interaction uh, exploring this. What I've also gone ahead and done is I've created a test prefix command and I've actually made it uh, a verify command. So just like before, what I went ahead and did was I replied with a message saying complete the CAPTCHA below to verify. And then I ran the CAPTCHA function and then I did the same setup. I checked the cache and then after the cache is full, then we go ahead and say approve the CAPTCHA, we delete it. And then after all of this, so after our CAPTCHA is complete and solved, then we go ahead and get our member, we assign them a role, and we say you're now verified. So we have two testable commands here. Uh, one is using an interaction slash command, and the other is using a message. So let's go ahead and save the file, restart the bot, and test this out. All right, so over in the Discord, let's go ahead and run our CAPTCHA test system. So we can just go ahead and run it here. And as you can see, it's going to say CAPTCHA testing in our initial reply. And then we're going to go ahead and get our CAPTCHA message. So remember before I explained, we're going to have our initial reply 
apply, we're going to have our CAPTCHA, and then after that, we're going to have our reply to the CAPTCHA that we can handle. So as you can see, we have a CAPTCHA that we need to solve. So we can actually just go ahead and solve it. So we have capital E, U, Z, Q, lowercase d, M, W, H, G, F. Uh, notice it is case sensitive. So if we go ahead and send it, it's going to say I pass a CAPTCHA. It's going to go ahead and edit in that initial message saying approve from the CAPTCHA. And then after that, we could execute a function if we wanted to. So let's go ahead and test this again. And if we go ahead and send it here, uh, this time let's purposely get it wrong. So if we do Q, R, C, Y, it looks like K, X, let's do a capital K. So we're going to get it wrong. U, R, O, or whatever. We can mess that up. As you can see, it's going to say that was wrong. Try again. Um, and if we keep getting it wrong, it's going to keep allowing us to get it wrong. Um, and it won't do anything, but after 10 minutes, then we won't be able to try again, essentially. All right, so now let's go ahead and try to use our verify command. So actually, before we use this, let's go ahead and remove the verified role from me in the server. Um, but now it's going to say complete the CAPTCHA below to verify. So I have a CAPTCHA here. Let's go ahead and try it. So S-U-F-L-P maybe Q-O-K-T, and it looks like a capital Y. Uh, and I got it wrong even though I was trying. So as you can see, these are kind of complicated. Maybe it's a B, a Q, an O, K, T, Y. Uh, and I'm going to keep getting it wrong, I guess. All right, so sometimes we can't actually get past these. So I'm just going to go ahead and try it again. Hopefully we can get an easier CAPTCHA. We can run verify. Um, and we can go ahead and solve this CAPTCHA. So, so hopefully this one is a little bit easier. I think I got it right. And as you can see, uh, it's going to go ahead and edit in saying approve from the CAPTCHA. It's going to say you have passed a CAPTCHA and it's going to say I'm now verified. So if we check my roles, now I have the verified role. So essentially, like I said, we have the initial message. We have the CAPTCHA message, which is deleted. Um, and then we have a function that can be executed after the CAPTCHA. So essentially, the CAPTCHA is gatekeeping that function. So that's how you can make an advanced CAPTCHA system for your Discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here. And we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways, because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.